Hey, uh, good to see you again. Thanks for ditching down with us. A little video today on hot sand shading. It's a little technique in marquetry where we're able to burn the veneer itself by using hot sand to um, create a, like a three dimensional shaded effect in some of the artwork that we create. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, it's not um, a basic or beginner's skill. It's something that more advanced, more people who are probably a little, who've done marketing for, for a while. But it is an additional skill. It is an additional attribute to have in, in your sort of uh, strings in your bow, as you might say. So it's, it's good, to, good to know. But to start it off, what I like to do, first of all, is get a few spur bits of veneer make some strips, some little strips of veneer, and I'll use them to test the temperature of the sand and to see how fast it's, it's, it's going, how fast it's burning, to get an idea on how it's actually, how it's getting on really. Um, I use it to test the waters, as you might say. Um, and you'll probably see that as I get into the demonstration later, why I do it. Because one thing that you want to do if you're doing marketry, you want to be consistent in your shading effect you want to be consistent so it all looks the same if you do one on one day one on the other you can find that the colorations can be different because there's a few degrees difference between when you was burning yesterday and the day today and what i would recommend uh, anybody who's doing this for the first time is to get do what i do and get an idea get a feeling to experiment a little bit with the veneer and how you're getting on with the sand okay so the what I tend to do is I've got some waste wood here. I've got some wood. Use a, a Stanley knife or a scalpel, a metal ruler or a metal bar, whatever you need to do. I'm not using the numbers. I've already straightened one edge up. That's already been done. Just rest it down. I mean, it looks like maybe almost two centimeters. It should be, should be fine. Drop the knife in. Now this is a soft wood. Ah, oh, you see, that's fine. You see how it's, it's, it's coming off a little bit there it's not bad let's do another one you'll find some woods if they're harder more denser it can take a little bit longer to burn but this wood here shouldn't take too long because it's very thin and very soft yeah yeah that's fine now once you've got a few strips like this like that you don't have to be as fancy with it. The idea is just to make some samples. So use your scissors, take the edge off. There you go, nice and clean, like so. I will probably go like that. Let's have a look at how much that is, just to give you an idea. So we're talking about five and a half, let's say six centimeter, six centimeters, 60 millimeters. And these are about two, two centimeters, 20 mil. So that should be fine. So I'll just, like so, cut through. Okay, cut through. Cut through. It's not maths, it's not rocket science. Okay. So here we are. These don't necessarily need to be used. These can go away. But we're talking now some little pieces like this and what I will be doing in, the dem in this demonstration today will be putting them in my little tweezers and dipping them into the sand and these are going to give me an indication of what's going on with the sand do I need to put more sand in do I need to take more sand out if it's the right temperature we've we got the flame on the right way and this will indicate to me what I need to do to get the desired effect in that particular for that particular uh, piece of veneer that I need to burn so this is what I start off with doing I get cut some sacrilegious strips some bits that I need to, to do some uh, samples with and then now I can get set up and then I can start practicing with these pieces to get a feeling of what's happening with the sand okay so hot sand shading we have a gas canister or a heat source, could be electric, can be gas. Um, we've got a pan, a second hand pan or some pan you don't mind using to put sand in. 
I've got some street sand or sand from the sea. It goes into the pan. You introduce your heat source. The sand gets very, very hot. I just add a little bit more to that. Now the best sand to use is actually silver sand. This is just basic sand, which shows you if you can do good with this, just think of what you can do with the real good stuff. See, we've got some seashells here. Now, let me just let some little warnings out here. This is a live session. This is a gas canister with gas in it. It's a pan. It's been burning here or been under heat for quite a few minutes now to warm up. That's usually what I do. And let me just say, I move the handle out of the way so that the space or the area where I'm working isn't obstructed by anything because the last thing that you want to do is to knock this over okay you do not want to do that okay so you've got to be as stable as possible it's hot get yourself a fire blanket an extinguisher take all the precautions that's necessary when you're doing this operation and of course make sure that you're safe okay so with that said and done let's get on and show you what we do with hot sand now previously I did my little uh, bits of wood and with these I can now dip them into the sand and get an idea where the heat is. Maybe I need to turn it up a little bit, dip the sand in. Oh it's going a little bit, yeah. So it's starting to go there slightly. So what the sand does, it allows the heat to gradually go into the wood and burn it so we're getting that effect there let's just go that let's just put that against some wood now there are smaller tweezers but like i said in one of my videos the closer you are to the heat source the more eventually it's going to get uncomfortable so for me right now it's not too bad but I can feel the heat here and I've been doing this for too long it's going to get very uncomfortable I'm just dipping and get in see the smoke coming off then make sure you've got no fire um, alarms going on around you like so and look what's happening to the wood it's curling up this part of the wood here is drying up the moisture is being evaporated out of it. It's been leaving the wood. And that's, that's what happens, that's to contract. So it gets smaller. And as it goes smaller, there's less, there's less water here now than there is there. So the wood shrinks. Now what you can do, you can move the sand about, like with, with these sample pieces, move it around to get it all level. It's all flush. You can also make little mountains, which is good if you want nice dips and sort of curves in the burn mark. But I'm looking for a nice sort of mellow straight line. I hope you can see this good on the, the video. Okay, so this is what I'll do. And you can feel the heat all around it, which is, these are really, re these are really handy for that. Click. I've got loads, see I'm, I'm miles away now, you see. Just level it off, dip it in. You can count to yourself if you want, leave it there. So I've got my veneer on here. Can I just say something already? There is already a slight burning effect. Already. With just me just stroking the sand. That's how sensitive you can get with this. this it's amazing what you can do uh, with this particular um, technique. But for now I just want to, want to let you guys see what you do and how to do it. So these are very basic techniques. Now in the, in the course that I'm setting up, I'm obviously going to be showing a lot more of the techniques and the tricks of the trade in this particular thing. You'll be amazed at what fine lines you can get with this, which are going to enhance your veneer work. They're going to make it look a lot better, look a lot more realistic. But one of the first things you need to start to understand or get into is to practice. And that's why I have these little pieces here come back a little bit I can feel the heat I'm just dipping it in into the sand I've tried to get the angle uh, enough so you can actually see the veneer go in there and you see look at that already 
and it goes all the way through the veneer it's not like it's on one side you can sand a fraction off but what you see is basically what you get I'm going to dip the corner in here just keep moving in that's, the, that's quite a fine line that I love that Sometimes you'll see smoke coming off. There you go. You can also sort of pull it off to make a little little mountain, as you might say, and then a real short amount where you dip it in. If it's right close to the heat source, you find you get a very fine line. See that one there? See, look, that's what I mean. There you go. There's nothing to stop you loosening this, repositioning your tweezers, like so. There you go. Let's have a look at that. Now you use this, like I, like I might have said already, um, to create three-dimensional effects, to create shadowing in your artwork, in the marquetry artwork. It really allows to bring the, the, the piece or the design alive, really brings it out. And, and therefore it's really important to understand between being, being able to make a very sharp dark line, very contrasting dark line, and one that's very mellow, very subtle, very sort of forgiving, very sort of soft. Because if you can get that technique, you can, you can go so far with this that you really do start to enhance the market your work that you're doing. Let's have another go. Now, what I will say is, there are some things that do happen with the veneer when you do this. It's in the lesson notes, but I'm going to quickly brief, brief, brief on this. I'm going to burn this part here, I'm going to dip it in the sand. Now, if I, if I put, make that bend a little bit, because I see it's already started to burn, so that's quite a lot. So there's smoke coming off. <coughs> and that's quite, quite, that's quite intense, that's really quick. But look what's happened to this. Now, it will bend back, you might have to soften that but it contracts and the other thing that happens is if it gets too hot it will burn this it shrinks so you've got to bear that in mind so never cut your pieces perfectly and then burn them then put them back because you're going to find that there's a few problems that's happened your gaps it shrinks it's smaller it's been going for a few minutes now this gas if we compare these two now together should be able to see that there's a difference see what I did I made this sand uh, thinner and it made the line more pronounced whereas before it was a bit thicker I was actually dipping under the sand now we're going to do now one which is a bit more mellower like the first one where the, where the it's more gradual and with that I'm going to just dip it into the fatter sand Picker. There you go. Okay. So welcome to the world of hot sand shading. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now because we've got lots to do and uh, I've got lots to talk about. But I've got to turn this off now and conclude this particular little demonstration of hot sand shading. Um, Again, be safe with, with this, always be safe. The thing that I like about this the most is, is that I don't have to go and do this in my kitchen. It's very mobile, the gas is very mobile. There you go, oh, getting quite hot that, yep. So that's off, that will cool. I'm not gonna move that for at least half an hour. It's well ventilated. Um, what I like about it is you can do it anywhere. So I can do it in my studio, I can go into my workshop shed. I don't know a lot of people who've got like a workshop where they've got a cooking stove. So this is a real advantage being mobile. This is an ideal solution. You can move it anywhere. Um, but yes, I like them. They're easy to control. I, I wasn't having it on super high. I was letting the heat build up, let it build up, let it work, and then start to work. And of course, handy thing to do is to do some samples. The same wood that you're going to burn, do some samples. You will find that some woods are softer than other woods. Harder woods take longer. 
and also the burning effect can also creep less into a harder wood than it can a soft wood okay now but tons of uh, stuff on the notes on the course um but again i just wanted to make sure that uh, this is a nice simple uh, simple demonstration hope you liked it give us a thumbs up and hopefully we'll see you in the next video thanks for coming Thank you.